This is Natalina Love, and I'm here with Master Coach Beth Ellen. We are both Rory Ray coaches, and actually, we also are the hosts of the Rory Ray Siren School Feminine Energy Workshops each month. And oh my goodness, this we decided to just get together and have a feminine energy chat. Over the last, what, two years, two, almost maybe three years now, Beth and I have been meeting regularly to put together these workshops and have just enjoyed the whole process of using the tools and talking about how, how we have implemented them, how we've used them in our own life, what new things we learn from even the same tools every, every, every day, every month, every, you know, the same tools that we're learning, the same tools that we're teaching, there's always more levels to ourselves, to our own emotional landscapes, to the, our desires that we have. So we just thought, hey, why don't we make this into a bigger conversation and share the, share the, share the wealth, share the joy here. I'm feeling excited. Hello, everybody. And yes, at the Feminine Energy Workshop, often we'll get questions like, how can we, how can we apply the information more? How can we hear more? How can we learn more? And we know there's lots of different ways and we all have different uh, ways we like to apply and learn information. So it could be through the the workshop. It could be through the um, Siren Island. It could be, you know, on in the Facebook group. It could be one-on-one -on -one coaching. Maybe you like the podcast type style. And so Natalina and I were like, why not? Let's try it. Let's see how it goes. So here we are, our first episode. So thank you so much for for joining us, for listening in, for watching, and any questions you have, if you'd like us to go deeper on something, please feel welcome to um, put it in the chat. And if we don't cover it this one, of course, then we'll cover it the next one. I know Natalina can see live if somebody types in something now, right? Is that right? Okay. Yes, I can. I can see comments coming through as they're live. And so long as my eyes hit that part of the screen, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then, I'll, right. then I'll see you. So yes, please let us know how all of this is resonating for you. Or if it's not resonating for you, if you're in some other area and want us to bring this into the conversation, we'd love to, we'd love to make this a place. We'd, we'd love to make this a feminine energy chat space. So one thing I always like to mention each month when we get together at the workshop is that we coaches, we apply the tools to our lives each and every day. And I'll say this, just being completely transparent on the times that I don't, when I'm, when I'm feeling like my life is feeling more chaotic and I stop and I pause and I kind of notice and catch and become aware I realize, oh, wow, I have not been using this tool that usually I like to use. I mean, we all have different ones, our go-tos. And if you don't have one, there'll be one that comes up for you at some point and it'll, you'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, I can use that. So I just want you to know that this is, uh, we're what like that commercial, we're not only, like with the hair commercial, we're not only owners, we're clients. <laughs> We're not only sharing these tools, we use them. And it it makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. I use them each and every day in my own personal life. So. No, that makes a lot of sense. I think, yeah, absolutely. That's why we're here is because Rory's work had such a profound impact on our own lives. For me, like I talk about it as like, oh my gosh, it was a, it was a, it was a game changer. And I like, I like to tell my story as we, and maybe this is a good place to tell our stories. Our, our, our big plan was to be like, let's talk about 
how doing things together just feels good and how we get more done together or all the ways that feminine energy gets things done and lots and lots and lots to share on this. And I, I picked this topic well, collaboratively, because I know all of the stories that Beth has as well in this area with um, hiring people in your house, hiring people in your business. Hi well, well, I don't know why that word keeps coming up for me. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you need to hire someone and sometimes you can just enlist a friend and you can um, parallel play with work or just whatever you're doing. And so that that may be the bigger topic today. And that may be a topic that overflows into other other conversations, other feminine energy chats. But um, yeah, maybe we should start with our stories. I should, I should I go first or do you want to go first? Yeah, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> OK, so I, I I like to cutely say that I crash landed into coaching and finding feminine energy from law of attraction work. I um that's that's how I started. It was, oh, my gosh, not quite two decades ago where I feel like you know, one, one day, a dark and stormy night, whatever, you know, like the, the <laughs> most dramatic version of this, where I was like, I don't really see any happiness in this path, even though it's all of the things that I should do this, I should do this, I should do this, and not feeling like happiness is ever going to find me. And then when law of attraction all of that came up, you know, The Secret and Rhonda Byrne, and it was on Oprah. And my closest inner circle was all like, we got the books, we got the DVDs, we're doing this. And I'm like, okay. And the next thing I knew, I was living in New York. So I mean, like, that was pretty profound to me, like, I'm leaving out some details. But then it wasn't until it wasn't until I found the feminine energy tools. It wasn't until and that for me, that was Rory, and it stuck. And we're still here, right? That's when everything really just grounded in, like, it was all like, oh, my desires, and all of this, my emotions, it it's it had less of a should feeling to it where and i i mean we could have a we could have a conversation about law of attraction but that's how i got here as i crash landed into coaching and found feminine energy through a desire to consciously attract to have and feel better about life so that's kind of the distilled version and beth what about you <laughs> Well, yeah. So I definitely, I was living, I live in the United States. I live on the West coast. I was living in Georgia in the Atlanta area and I was married. Um, and I come from a two parent household and I saw my parents disagree. I saw them even argue sometimes, but I saw them work things through. I saw them really talk to each other, go deeper and both ask each other, well, what do you mean? What is, what's going on here? And what are you really trying to say? And, or they even they like clarify. So are you saying that? So that's what I grew up with. And so in teaching my background, so I have very much of um analytical mindset. I was definitely a tomboy. Um, I played sports and I love to get dirty. And, but I was still a girl, you know, I still wanted the boy to pick me that kind of thing. I still wanted the boy to call me and ask me out. So growing up, I had a very solid home, loving, uh, a love, loving home life. However, I didn't feel so secure outside my home. Um, me being multiracial and growing up in a predominantly um, uh, white area. So, um, and a lot of people were confused by me being multiracial and a lot of questions would come up. I never really had a problem with myself. Um, I, I couldn't explain to people like why I look the way I look. And a lot of my friends would get asked out and I wouldn't. So I kind of had this, um, I felt fine with me. Like, this is who I am. This is me. But I did feel like boys just weren't interested in me. Like I didn't fit the mainstream of the look they were looking for or, you know, and I love sports. 
I wasn't super cute. I wore dream, I wore jeans and t-shirts to school, stuff like that. I had lots of friends, got along with people just fine and everything, but I just, but I began to feel about myself that, you know, guys just aren't interested in me. They're friends with me, but they're not interested in me as more than a friend. That's, that's a message I had received, not saying it's true. And everybody was acted that way, but that's just what I received. So I get married and, um, I'm expecting my relationship to be a lot like my parents, where we can say how we feel, discuss it. We might even bump heads really hard, but we're going to both want to work things through. Well, it took me a long time to realize that my spouse did not grow up the same way. I mean, I would constantly be like, well, no, let's just talk about it. Let's get, you know, eh, didn't work. I came across Rory's work. I honestly don't remember exactly how, because this is going to date me a bit, but it was, there wasn't uh, a lot of online, you know, there wasn't like, like the way it is now. Um, but I ended up purchasing programs that came in CDs, you know, you know what those are, but, um, and I, and I still have them. I still listen to them. I still, and I hear something different every time I, I hear, I listen to them. The first time, the first one I got was like reconnect your relationship. And I, I cried mostly through it. I, I was a, uh, I became a doormat, beat myself up personality, just wanting my marriage to work so bad that I would do whatever it took. And um, which included ignoring how I felt, becoming numb to how I felt because I had, a, if I could just do it right, you know, that's in quotes, if I could just do it right, then things would work out. But what the reconnect program really helped me to see was I was so down on myself. I was so like looking at me, like I was just the one doing it wrong. And what I heard was, no, you can't do it wrong. You can only do what you know how to do in the moment with the information that you have. And what I loved about Rory's work is that she was just so transparent. I felt like we were sitting down at a coffee shop and she's just telling me and pouring out her life to me. I would listen to it over and over and over. So as I began to really check in with how I felt, I realized that my feelings were completely being ignored by other people. And again, I'm not going to blame other people because I taught them I ignored myself, so that's what people began to do also. Um, and so through this work, I began to pay more attention to how I felt, and I began to make decisions from how I felt, not emotionally, erratically, and, you know, because sometimes I think that um, we misunderstand, because maybe somebody says, calm down to us, or maybe somebody says, oh, she's on her cycle, or she must be that time of the month, and we get so offended because we're like, we have all these feelings, but we just want to be able to articulate them and we don't always know how. So I would start with, this feels good, this doesn't feel good. And that's all I would say. If somebody said, hey, Beth, how's it going? And I would say, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling okay, I'm feeling sleepy, I'm feeling hungry. I mean, total basic. But it opened the world for me. And it made me realize that I was married to somebody who just didn't see life the same way I did, didn't see family the same, didn't see raising our child the same, didn't see, and, and I realized it's okay. You know, I felt bad at first, like I had failed because my parents had been married for so long. So I must have screwed up, but it just applying these tools giving myself love, giving myself what I wanted others to give me. I was, I, I just became determined. I'll give it to myself first. I'll give it to myself first. Now there's still, I still have, honestly, I still have doormat tendencies and it's been more than 20 years because I've been, I had a necessary ending. Um, so that was 12 years ago almost. So that's the, so before that I was, into Rory's work at least five, seven years, maybe more. Um, but it just, it just, I feel like it saved my life. That's what I always say. It, it really saved my life because I was just giving myself away 
And you can only go so low, ladies. You can only go so low. And some people will try to you know, pour into you and say, no, 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 you're better than that and this and that. But if you don't believe it yourself, it doesn't matter what they're saying. And eventually they'll just leave you alone because they're like, well, that's where she wants to be or needs to be or, you know, whatever. Um, so I feel like I'm awake. I'm alert. I can breathe. I feel free and fresh, refreshed, rejuvenated. And, and relationships haven't come easy for me since the necessary ending, the divorce. Um, I've, I've had a bunch of different bumps on the road. Um, but I would still keep going, still try, because I knew I wanted to have a really happy, loving relationship. And I met a really great person um, a few years ago, and we both keep showing up. We both keep showing up, and it just feels good. Oh, man. So I, I actually planned on saying other things, but that's just where it went. So we'll, you know, as we continue, we'll get to know each other. I, I'm, I'm, say, I'm feeling the same thing. You know, I, I think that's something that just happens when, when you, when you go live and you're in the moment, yeah. you never really know exactly what's going to come out of your mouth unless you really, really just memorized your lines and, and, I'm, and that's not what we've done. That's not what exactly. we've done. <laughs> and that's not, and that's not the Rory Ray method. The oh. Rory Ray method is not to memorize lines. I mean, I love that you said that because I remember one time. I don't know which program, but I remember one time hearing Rory say, it may have been a live program, like you can't turn the light switch on and off. You can't think, oh, there's a cute guy. I'm going to turn the switch on and feminine energy. And I'm going to have the eye contact. I'm going to smile and lean back. And then, eh, God, I'm not interested. Turn the switch off. It doesn't work that way. No. And I, re I remember when she's, when I, when I heard her say that, um, it made such a difference because then I was like, oh, I have to do this with everybody. I've got to be really showing up and paying attention with everybody. Yeah. Well, and that's a great way to take all of this conversation. Like, who are you when you're with other people? Who are you when you're with yourself? Are you beating yourself up? Like, I, I've, I've, I've brought up this a topic in like writing and some other conversations where I talk about mean inspiration, where like you are so mean to yourself as inspirational fuel to get things done. <laughs> mean inspiration. And even when that works, eventually you, you poop out, you, you know, you lose that steam and you kind of cave in on yourself or you become this like automaton where, you know, like it, it doesn't ultimately work. It's kind of like that light switch on off thing with, and like wanting to bring in one of Rory's top tools for everything that probably gets some of the most pushback because it's such a huge tool. It like encompasses the whole body of her work. So it's like, you know, if you can really encompass something in one tool it's the circular dating it's rory's circular dating tool and that's what she calls it free therapy like it's where you take a tool even just one tool and on a date and a date could be 15 seconds with the barista when you go order your you know i'm like the coffee place that i go to has lavender has just brought out a spring line of lavender drinks. And I'm like, ah. so that's on my circular dating list. Now I got to go and get a lavender drink. It could be that, you know, however long it takes you to order that coffee and have that human moment. It could be that, you know, the, the couple of minutes that it takes to check out. And I know right now, some of you may be like, well, now you can order your coffee without even talking to anybody. And I'm like, there's a part of me that's all like, oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and that you can check out your groceries without having to talk to anyone and I, there's a lot of feelings around this but there's so many opportunities to have these human connections and some of us are like yes it feels good being around people and some of us are like thank goodness I don't have to have that human interaction so like there's lots of feelings here um, the joys of connection and the what the the fears the disappointment the chaos the chaos of connection yeah and i love to go into the the how to do it so you so let's just just two quick little examples when so you're buying groceries 
and you pull up. Oh, well, okay, 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 okay. Two different examples with bread okay. drop. One is you pull up to the store and they put them in your car. The other is they just drop them off at your doorstep. So how do we incorporate feeling messages? So say you you drove and you have, this is the thing. You have to imagine yourself doing it. So before you go to the store, you're sitting in your car, feel your steering wheel and just ask yourself, how do I feel? Maybe you feel annoyed that you have to even leave to go, to go to the store Then say that. I feel annoyed to drive to the store. Maybe you feel relieved. I feel relieved that someone else grabbed my groceries. Okay. So just check in with yourself. So you drive, you get there, you pull into the spot, whatever it is you do, let them know you're there. They show up, you pop the trunk. You can still holler at the person and say, this feels really good. Thank you so much. Or it feels good to have you put them in the car. I appreciate you. I'm feeling appreciation for you. So those little bits, it makes a difference. And what's, what I believe happens, it's kind of like maybe a, like a, everything's a puzzle piece. So you're one little puzzle piece. The person putting the groceries into your car is a puzzle piece. The color might be all white or gray, just no color to it. The moment you say something that's, a connecting moment, you feel better and you don't know it until you do it. But you'll notice like, even though you, when you don't get your way, you'll notice you feel better having spoken authentically in the truth. And you, and you say, maybe you feel annoyed and tired. You can say, you know what? Even though I'm feeling tired today, I'm feeling happy to, that you're able to put these in my car. Thank you. You're gonna feel better that person is going to feel amazing walking back into the store. You know, next time they see your name come through, they might, oh, I want to get that one. You know, they're going to make sure everything's correct. The, the weights of the veggies, everything is going to be so much, you know, just accurate on point, but you add color to your little picture, you know? Um, and you can, we can change the colors. You know, whatever, for me, the, the the feel good colors are the purples and the pinks and a little bit of red, maybe a little yellow highlight, like a sunshine, you know, and it just feels good. I feel it in my body and you drive off and you check in. How do I feel having my groceries? Oh, feels good to have that checked off my list. Just start there. Feels good. Feels bad. Feels sad. Feels sleepy. Just start simple. Then if you're you're getting your groceries from home. A lot of times in the app, they want to know, how was it? You know, any comments and just find something positive to say. Thank you, you know, to the person, whoever. It feels good to have my groceries on the porch out of the rain. Oh. You know, just find something that can let the person know, oh, they did they did a great job and you're going to feel better about it too. But you don't know it until you actually try it. And um, you'll just, everything will begin to feel a little bit lighter the more you do it. You can, you can add, sprinkle a little bit of feminine energy. Rory Ray, it, I, I love to, that's my little phrase I have with my girlfriends, you know, oh, you Rory Ray it. You know, that means, you know, you didn't make the other person wrong, you know, so we're talking specifically relationship yeah, stuff, but yeah. you're, you're totally embodying the, the goddess yeah. muse. You're, you're totally the goddess mother herself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and yeah. we can Rory Ray it in everything. We really can. So, and then all it is, is it's not perfection. It's just doing your best and showing up to, to share how you really feel not in a dumping, but just find something that, that can be, that, that can feel good. And even if you're feeling sad, you're feeling lonely, you know, gosh, I've been feeling lonely. And so it feels really good to have the groceries on my doorstep, you know, within the hour you said they would be here. Thank you. So there's, there's ways to encourage ourselves with, with, because we're just telling the truth. I, I really like that. I really like that, Beth. I mean, with all of the, all of the layers of how you can 
find yourself exploring and using, practicing, exploring, experimenting with all of the tools. That's with what you're voicing, what you're experiencing, how you are aware of what's going on around you, as well as what's inside of you. Like, start with where you are. Yeah, I'm not feeling great and it feels good just being around adults. If you're, you know, if you're, if you're used to like being around tiny people all the time, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been feeling so tired and which if we stopped right there, it could have maybe a very heavy feeling and maybe, and that, that alone still has, has a, has merit of being able to voice that, say that out loud and hear yourself feel heard. Mm -hmm. But like not staying in that space of, and it also feels good to, it feels good to see you. It feels good to have my groceries. It feels good to see another adult. It feels good to have, you know, see, have the sun shining. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. There are so many ways that we can take a concept and play with it and let it expand our energy field, expand our inner world. And that's really, that's really where lots of this is at. I mean, Rory said, and we'll say this, we'll probably reference her a lot because she's, she's just been so impactful in I think both of our lives really mm -hmm. were for sure. As you were telling your story about how, how the whole relationship dynamic, I mean, like that's how I found her too. You know, it's like, oh, you know, it would be really, really great to have a connection with men. And that would be that would be wonderful. And so like that's I I found those programs, too. You can see my CDs right there, right there on my oh, show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I my now. <laughs> yeah. So I started with the CDs as well, the books and the, the CDs and yeah. some of the the most profound work and the whole feminine energy um collection is about at first I didn't understand it at all it was mm -hmm. it was alien technology well if you want to say it like that like just feel your feelings I'm like I don't understand what you're saying to me and I don't know how that's going to get my man and uh, if it's relevant which it may be for some people as soon as I started working with the Rory Ray tools and I mean even though at first it was all about just having what I wanted and a and a and a better way of doing a trap right. Right. but I mean it was very I mean within a year Literally within a year, I was married and the man adores me. It's, it's, you know, it, and I just, I just can't get enough of this feminine energy stuff. Like, I feel like we're doing world changing, life saving stuff where we're bringing back ancient stuff that was lost. We are bringing it back. This women, feminine energy empowerment. There is, there's yeah. something really important and really to use the word magical it, happening and and diving into this work and these tools and exploring experimenting allowing yourself to feel there's you know the the wisdom women's wisdom of community bringing you know family connection like this is this is our domain right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and and definitely I I, I love that you mentioned the book. I, and that's actually where I started before I, um, the CDs was uh, have the relationship, have the relationship you want. And I printed it up and I highlighted it. I wrote all in it. I read it over and over and over. And I, the one, the one part that really stuck out at me was um, I think it's the four rules of, of what, what not to do. And I just remember thinking, Oh my gosh. And the, it made me so aware because my thoughts was like, yeah, you should do that. Why are you doing that? And it was like, I can't do any of that. I can't do any, I can't say that. But it made such a difference. It, it, and, I, and I do it with everybody, not just with men, because it, so really it, it's helped me with my relationships just in general. I got along fine with people, but just the, the my relationships are so much more, they're just deeper and genuine and just, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're below, they're below surface, you know, um, it allows for real connection. 
um, something else you mentioned, I just left my mind, but um, where I'm living at now, I moved here. Um, I had like, I don't know, eight or nine people who showed up to help me move in the morning uh, from my former apartment into, um, I share a duplex with one of my brothers. So into the duplex. And so it's a little bit larger and, and it has an upstairs. But then here I had probably 20 friends who came, people were wiping out the, the drawers before putting dishes in, people were help. I mean, it was amazing. And it was, it was fun. It felt really good. And then there were um, some of my guy friends, they brought over a grill. They, you know, we had chairs out, people were hanging out, relaxing, and we ended up having a barbecue. Well, one of my girlfriends who I grew up with, she said to me, she said, Beth, you know, not everybody has this. And I had no idea what she was talking about. And she said, um, she said, not everybody has where just people show up and help someone move and then make it into a party and a fun event. And I've never forgotten that. I've been here maybe, I don't know, nine or 10 years now. And I just remember it every now and then because it's like, oh, wow. And I've noticed not everybody does have that. But what I really do believe is that, and this, this may sound just crazy corny, but I promise you it's true. The Rory Ray method, her tools, her teachings, her being so transparent, not saying you have to go out and be transparent with everybody and tell all your business, but her being willing to do that, it helped me in how I can be, because I'm, I'm a pretty transparent person in general. My personality, I'm friendly, I'm kind, all those things, but being able to be in connection with how I feel about myself, my relationship, all were just so... They are, they're just genuine, um, deep connecting relationships, even if I don't talk to somebody, but every six months. And it's because when I'm listening to them or when I'm sharing with them, the connection is just a different kind of connection. So sure, I may be a nice, kind person and sensitive and so forth and compassionate. Yes, that's my personality, but these tools, this work, this this whatever you want to call it, it works for everyone if you're open mm -hmm. because I could be nice and compassionate, but not open and be like, oh no, I've already tried that. I've already tried that. This doesn't work. This doesn't, it's a strategy. It's a this, it's a that, but it's it because I'm, I was open is why I feel like the tools and everything has worked so well for me in my life and my relationship. Yeah, no, that's a really good point is that whole like the transparency thing and we talk about this all the time intimacy and vulnerability like there's such a thing as empowered vulnerability where I mean what what even does that mean like that transparency like of course you're not going to like give out very very sensitive information to someone who you don't feel comfortable with and yet like there is a space, a space of inviting that intimacy and in. like, um, and we could talk about this in more concrete terms. I'm like someone let, let, in a context of someone that you know, love, and may, maybe they're in your inner circle. Even in this context, it can be very not easy to go into that intimate space. And I, I mean, that's been... That's been something that I've been catching in my life of going, okay, this is not easy to say, and I want to have this kind of connection with you. I know that I might get defensive and I don't want to, I don't want to do that with you. And I mean, in a bigger community or in, you know, where you're not in your inner, inner circle, like all of this translates, like you're not going to be unveiling yourself before you are ready however all of these tools all of these concepts this inner work stuff is going to have you less guarded so like the rest of the world isn't going to be mirroring that back to you so I mean it's even as immediate as it is of a shift and a transformation 
Yeah. At first, that first impression may be, oh, it's just another strategy. Or what is the strategy? Tell me what to do, what to say. And I, I tell my clients all the time, I could give you the most perfect words to say, but if they're not yours, if they're not authentic to you, then it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Well, and also, Natalina, if you say the words and you mean it and you feel it, but then you don't get what you want, it doesn't mean it didn't work. If anything, if anything, you're going to go through relationships faster because you're not what what used to take six months or a year might take a couple months or even a few weeks, you know, you, because the person I've had men say to me, wow, and this, and this is when I was really Rory Raying it. Like I'm, I'm like, I'm, I am connected to myself in these moments. I've had men who I thought, oh, they're into me. They like me. I like him. And then be like, you know what? One guy even said, I have prayed for a woman like you. He said, I'm not ready. I didn't realize. He's, you know, and I this is like after like, like the third date. And it may sound really like cliche and corny, but I believe him. And it doesn't matter if he was telling the truth or not. I said, okay. Did I feel disappointed? Absolutely. But I didn't have the heartbreak that I would have felt maybe some a few years earlier i would have felt like no no we can make it work we no 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 i no longer if a guy was like i just don't know if i can do this i say okay i would not be like well what's wrong what do you need i'm not trying to figure it out anymore if you don't know if you don't feel like it's going to work okay now if he comes back mm -hmm. and he's like What's that? Go ahead. Thank you for letting me know. Like you yes. can, and you can yes. still feel heartbroken Yes. and still be in that moment. I think that's part of like this discomfort, like, and the intimacy of, you know, this, I, it, that feels really hard to hear that. And I'm, I, it feels good. That may be a stretch for you in the moment. It feels good that we can, that we can be honest with each other. Yeah. It, you know, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for telling me the truth. And then what happens? Those little, so those little puzzle pieces, I, I imagine like those ones you might give a child and let them color it and then they break it apart and put it back together. So you got your white little puzzle and you're adding color. Maybe it's, maybe it's a, a blue, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's a, a light or a cobalt blue. And you're just like, you feel sad, but to be able to have the truth you know, because we always say, well, if he had just told me, you know, do you want to be in it a year and a half later? And he finally is like, I'm out. And and he knew there was a, there was something at him before. You know, and then also sometimes we know, but we'll go ahead and keep going and keep trying. Um, I remember uh, when when um again when I first started, um and I would share with everybody once I heard, like, I it really got into my, I really heard the message. You can't flip the switch on and off. You just need to be who you are, make it a part of you. That's why it's not a strategy. That's why it's not, oh, let me just plug this in and it's going to just work or a recipe you put in an oven and it's just going to work all the time. No, you have to make it you. So I, my mom, I would talk to my mom and say, oh, how's it going? And, oh, you know, mom is feeling good or, oh, I'm feeling tired or I'm feeling, you know, whatever. And the, at first my family was like, oh, you're feeling, huh? You know, and, they, and yes, they made fun of me and it was very, oh my God. Right. I felt really uncomfortable. <laughs> I felt awkward. I felt like, oh, I'm going to disappear. But now, you know, they're like, so how are you feeling, Beth? They're wanting to know. Again, connection has been created. They're letting me know how they feel. You know, they're letting me know their discomforts. Um, it's, I mean, it's great. You get to kind of be a, not that you want to lead the whole world, but you get to be a little beacon of light for the relationships around you and, and, and kind of offer some like hope and happiness. People really are drawn into like, wow. Oh yeah. You really know how you feel and you don't mind sharing it. It's well, attractive. Yeah. 
again i'll mention rory again rory talks yeah. about this is like being the first domino but like i mean like how feminine energy is that first as that first wave it's the lighthouse it's this it, yeah as you said like the beacon not the battery the beacon you know like you're the sun you're not you know it doesn't think about shining it just does and like i mean I think this is true for all of us. This is like a collective thing is we've all been told that feelings are bad. They can be complicated. They can be not easy to feel, but like that's, that's the maybe not final frontier, but that's, that's, you know, that's the cutting edge of life. And as and you were the first domino with this is how I'm feeling. This is how I'm feeling. And that first wave of like, oh, so you're feeling now. And it's possible that on the other side, you know, you had all the walls of like, is she telling me how she feels because, because she's upset with me because it's my problem. Cause it's my fault because I made her feel that way. Cause we've all got all this garbage. Like, and I'm, I'm saying you, but I mean me and all of us, right. <laughs> well, you know, and then, and then as we go on, our inner circle, the people around us, they really start to get that, oh, it's okay to talk about feelings. Feelings aren't dangerous. This feeling isn't going to destroy me. And there's more room for emotional intimacy, which is what we all want. That's what we all want, but we can't quite handle just yet. That connection, that closeness, like it's We are the first domino simply by being brave enough to take those baby steps. And yes, they can be very, very, like they could be micro steps. Right. I see your kitty cat. Yeah, she's, she's, she's something. <laughs> yeah, she's joining us. Very good. Oh, so, yeah. Well, I, you know what? We didn't know this is to those listening. We didn't know exactly how this was going to turn out. And now to Natalina, I think this turned out great. I'm it's kind I'm, of like an intro and like a, you know, we just, now we can just, whatever people want to talk about, we just go from there. Right. So yeah, let us know how this is landing for you. I guess this is our, our siren story, our Rory Ray siren beginnings, the, um, I don't know what a fancier word for beginning is, but our, our siren, our Rory Ray feminine energy siren beginnings uh if you'd like to share yours we'd love to we'd love to see your story where you're coming from where you're hoping to head and uh, yeah let us know how all this resonates for you and if you'd like join us at the feminine energy workshop this month it'll be on the 31st the 30, 31st of of march it's a Sunday, the last Sunday of the month, and um, Natalina will be leading us. She'll be um, coaching us. I and I'm blanking on the well. Anyways, I'm blanking. Our on the yes, the dream relationship, <laughs> our dream relationship. So we're going to be going into your what you really want in your relationship, and I, I say this is a pretty big topic, but um, it can be very defined with what do you want whether you are in a married committed relationship or if you're dating and there's no one in your life just yet we're going to be holding space for you to entertain what it is that you really really want in this area and in these workshops we there's two parts to them all of it is rather intimate we do group coaching and tools together in a group room and then we break off into smaller more intimate breakout room coaching and we come together for final notes before we say goodbye to everyone it's just been a a, a really lovely time yeah and just know your dream relationship may not look like anyone else's it might be completely different there's nothing wrong with it um you know, so just, so bring whatever it is that you have, bring your dream with you and the, the tools that we go over, it'll help you with whatever your dream is. So there's not just one type of, uh, what a dream looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And that's, that's, 
something else that I think touches back on something that from today's conversation from our chat today is exploring what it is that you want at all. Because until we start, you know, oh, I want that. What would that look like? What would that sound like? What would that feel like? Okay, well, what if that was right in your lap right now? How would that feel? You're going to go through like a whole Ferris wheel of emotions. You're going to go through the whole, you know, the whole, I was going to say Disneyland experience of, you know, the ups and downs and the all of the, you know, of this. And that's that's exactly what we have to do. I, I say have to, and I'm not pleased with saying have to, but like it is part of the experience. So like really letting yourself explore this. Some of us may have, may find themselves that you're telling yourself what you want is something that someone else told you to want. And until yeah. you explore it, until you start, you know, turning the pages over, start feeling it out, start exploring you might realize, you know, actually what I want is a travel partner to go and see the, you know, the ruins of the the seven world wonders and where the Babylonian hanging gardens used to be. And, you know, maybe it's, I don't know, ancient aliens. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's whatever your dreams are. It could be, it could, it could even surprise you what they ultimately are. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, yeah. Yeah, we could go on and on and on. So I'll, I'll, I won't uh, share all the thoughts that are coming into my head right now because I would be here another few hours. But, but yeah, definitely. Yeah, I just, I just want ladies you to feel feel comfortable that whatever your dream is, bring it, bring it. Even if you don't know what your dream is, bring that space. Um, one of the things that um, I learned from Rory also early on was. I didn't, I couldn't figure out what I wanted. I was, I felt so much pain and I felt so much sadness and loneliness in the marriage. So I couldn't figure out what did I want. But then what I learned from Rory was when you know what you don't want, you can figure out what you do want. So I would start there. I'm like, okay, so I don't want to be talked to this way. I don't want to be treated this way. I, you know, okay. So I want to be talk to this way I want to be treated this way or I want to know that our bills are paid I want to know that if you say you're going to do this then I know you're going to I can I can count on it um or some kind of communication like oh hey I can't do it you know but not just as though nothing ever happened as nothing was ever said so you can figure out what you want as you hit things and bump into things like oh that doesn't feel good I don't want that. So then you oh, what do I want? Okay. And so, without, yeah. yeah, without being afraid of it or yeah. going into defense and attack and, you know, strategy and masculine energy, the suiting up of it. So yeah, it'll, it, it'll be exciting. So these are always exciting and wonderful. So uh, thank you so much for being here, Beth. Um, you too. I'm excited I for do the next conversations our feminine energy chats coming up me too all right bye ladies Mwah. <laughs>